Hello and welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody, in this little box. Now, some of you were interested in how I created my Halloween special video, so today I'll give you the lowdown on how I edited the footage in Premiere Elements and added the sound effects and the video effects and the soundtrack. Let's get started. This is a great example of scope creep. From the very beginning, I just wanted to do a spooky ending to my the day I worked for Nord film. I was going to get lost in the forest. There was going to be a couple of mysterious spooky noises, but it ended up getting a little bit out of control as I got carried away. We had spooky kids on the paths. We had Blair Witch references and a climatic final scene where I was hunting around a haunted house with a torch. But I had fun making it and learned a lot about along the way, so it's going to be fun to share that with you today. How much time did this take for me to make? Many of you were wondering. Well, far too much time is the answer. I'm a bit embarrassed to say, but it was almost, I would guess, four hours of shooting spread over three or four days, and probably a good eight hours of editing, but I did quite enjoy the process. So let's take a look at the project here and see what we have. I'm now zoomed out so we can see the entire six minutes but if we zoom in a bit here so we can see the details now the blue track running through the middle that's my main video track okay and then if we skip across here a little bit you can see some sound effects that i've put in on the bottom track here this is my movie soundtrack the drone sound that you're hearing here are some hits and rises here we have special effects and also on the top special effects. Let's take a look at this glitch effect that I use quite a lot. Okay, so what I'm doing there is we're obviously adding this glitch sound effect that I sampled from a YouTube video. These were free for use apparently, so I feel okay about stealing those. And then on this clip I've applied an effect that's included with Premiere Elements that's called this old film. And you can adjust the damage of the film on a scale. I've pretty much cranked it up to 100% there. And also you can uh, adjust the color of it, add color tints and the jitter if you want it shaking around a bit. And there's different types of film worn effects as well. I've gone for crackly or grainy most of the time. But that together with the glitch sound effect works pretty well. Yeah, it's a cliche, I know, but that's what I was aiming for here. So here is where the music comes in as well. Let me mute the other track so you can really hear what that sounds like. I really, really love this music and I'm ashamed to say that I did not create it myself, but I sampled this from some random YouTube videos. And I give credits in the links below. And I do feel bad for taking it, but this is not for any commercial reasons. And I'm crediting the original artist, so maybe not too bad. But this did actually inspire me to create my own drones. How hard can it be? Probably very hard, I'm guessing, but I'd like to have a go. I've also used a lot of hits. Actually, rises and hits, they're called. You can see an example of that here. Let me play this for you. If I just remove the mute there. So we have a drone ambient texture playing all the time through this. But then I've added on this track so-called rises and hits. Let me show you what that sounds like. Okay, that's a really cool effect. Then let me just try muting this. And you'll see what it sounds like without it. Let's mute the drone as well. It's so amazing. The film loses everything. All the suspense and the atmosphere is completely gone. It was a fascinating experiment for me to do this. I realized just how important the music soundtrack is. And I've been damaged by this now as well. Every time I'm watching a Hollywood film or some TV show, I'm just listening to the music now. I'm listening for these rises and hits because you hear them all the time. Let me show you another example. Over here we have one as well. Let's, let's watch this. A 
Again, that's just nonsense without those sound effects. It's really impressive. And again, I've been inspired now, although I've borrowed these from other YouTube clips, I'm inspired now to create my own rises and hits and drones. Expect to see more of that in the future. So another problem I had was getting the right look on the film. Let me jump to this clip, perhaps, is a good one to show you. This one, for example. Did you hear that? What I've tried to do here is make everything look darker and gloomier than it actually was. Let's go to the adjustments that I've made, the colour grading. So what I've done is I've adjusted the gamma correction in many cases. There we go. I've turned everything down there somewhere. For lighting, I've adjusted the brightness, the exposure and the black and white levels. What I really wanted to do was just adjust the brightness of the sky, but I didn't find a way to do that. But if I just show you what it's like without the color correction, if I reset that and reset that, it's not half as spooky anymore, is it? Also, I've messed with the color. I've reduced the saturation to give a more gloomy, chill, chilly look, I suppose. So if we reset that, that's what it was originally which looks pretty rubbish, doesn't yeah. it? So it's having a huge effect here. And I've color graded all of these clips. Also, it's a weird it's rather time consuming <laughs> process. Yeah, strange. This is quite a complex project with multi tracks and many, many edits, especially in this area. I've ed tried to edit every second or so just to get a very fast moving action pace to the film. But in the beginning, I shot an hour of footage and editing an hour down to just five minutes is extremely tedious. You have to go through all the footage you've taken and choose the best bits and edit the cut in and the cut out points. So that spooky creature that pops up every now and then as a little glitch effect is actually this. Let me show you. <laughs> it's a toy belonging to my girlfriend that she's had since she was a small child but you can see with a bit of editing and a very very short amount of time on the screen it does look quite spooky so luckily as we were scouting out locations we found this perfect spooky old derelict decrepit house but it was in someone's back garden so we rang on the doorbell and asked the owners if it was okay to shoot there for a couple of nights and they said that was okay it ended up being perfect, I think. Let's look at the jump scare at the end. <laughs> okay, a couple of things to note here that's quite fun. The actual sound. That one. I sampled from Five Nights at Freddy's. It's a game that my kid was playing for a little while. Pretty epic jump scare sound there. The organ sound is not the DX7. That's some church organ, again, that I sampled. We have some thunder effects going on as well. Let me play you that. Again, I sampled that from YouTube. And then we have the Manacle laughing. <laughs> Maniacal? Manacle? Pretty well. One lesson I learned, however, is to get the story before you start filming. The way I did this is I filmed a couple of sequences and put them together in a spooky film and then had this idea about the curse of the DX7 coming back to haunt me and me playing it inside this spooky old house. And that meant I had to rearrange all of my edits and actually shoot some film over again. So my advice to you and the lessons I've learned after doing this is make sure you have a pretty strong story and a script before you start doing your filming. It's really important, the most important thing of any video. <laughs> that was also Five Nights at Freddy's, that effect. And this music I created about a year ago, I guess, on my Nordlead A1. And I used it to have a guess the synth challenge on Harmony Central and Keyboard Corner forums. And most people thought it was a real analogue, which I thought was quite interesting. Let me show you what that house looked like without all of the gloomy effects on the film. There we go. If I zoom in on this one and remove all of the effects, clip remove effect 
effects. Let's take off the video effects. You can maybe see a little bit better what it looked like because it was such a cool house. <laughs> Even after I removed the effects, it still looks really spooky, doesn't it? One thing that was interesting, there was a very short time window when we could shoot these films, because you need a little bit of light in order to film anything. But if you have too much light, it just looks like it's in the day. And this is just in the half an hour before it got pitch black. So that's why we had to film over three or four days, just to get that little window of time when it's not too bright and not too dark. I thought it would be fun just to show you the two spooky kids without any sound effects or video effects applied. Here they come. <laughs> Not half as spooky now, are they? That's my son on the left there. And it's just a coincidence they have exactly the same clothes. So there you go. You are probably surprised to see how much effort I put into this. What I'm going to do now is play through the film one more time, or most of it anyway, and I'll leave the timeline on the screen so that you can see the edits as they are happening and the sound effects when they're coming in and out. I think you'll find that interesting. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.